you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is the time No, we don't stop in us till we reach the finish line You know that we can hold it down Shout out to my man Sammy Got it off the ground And to all the listeners Tuned in right now Got debates, analysis, and speculation This is sports talk for the new generation You know where to find us Got a reputation Sick podcast, your number one sports destination We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah Cause this is the time No way, no stopping us Till we reach the finish line Listen to the Sick Podcast. The Eye Test with Pierre McGuire and Jimmy Murphy. The Stanley Cup winning Colorado Avalanche. And after 22 years, Raymond Marsh! 
the sickest NHL podcast. It's going to be sick. And welcome to another edition of the eye test here on the sick podcast network. He's Pierre McGuire. I'm Jimmy Murphy. Pierre, people went to a, a fight and a hockey game broke out last night at Madison Square Garden. Uh, wow. What I, I, you were talk about the we- I thought you were going to start with the weather in Boston and how I could have skated to the gym this morning rather than drive. <laughs> yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. Well, you do a line yeah, roll. Seriously, to all our viewers and listeners in all of New England and parts of New York State and parts of Canada that are going through the weather, please stay safe. It's not friendly outside. It's not. It no, really it's not. not. A lot of accidents, a lot of uh, cars skidding off the road around here for sure, Pierre. Lots of ice. So I, I echo your sentiment there. Stay safe. But uh, what a start to that game in New York at Madison Square Garden. Devils and Rangers. We knew Rempe in McDermott were most very likely going to uh, drop the gloves. I don't think any of us, though, foresaw what happened right from the get-go there. And, you know, Pierre, a lot of people right now are, you know, in, in New York are kind of going after Travis Green, and one of them being the head coach of the New York Rangers. Uh, as you and I discussed, though, off the air, and we'll say it now, I, I, I don't think that's the guy who should be looking at uh, for the shenanigans that took place there. Uh, I, I think this is more on the other side, on Peter Laboulette. So I, I'll let you give your take on what developed there and your thoughts and your reaction to it, and then I'll, I'll kind of give you mine right after. One of the best parts about hockey is the passion that the fans and the players and the coaches have. And mm-hmm. there's no experience, like an in-house experience for hockey. And I know people are trying to ban ho- uh, fighting in hockey, but you see the – way people respond to it and it's part of i guess where society has always been as long as it's not them getting punched in the face people are okay with it um one of the things that's really interesting i was there the last time they had a five on five fight i was working the game with eddie olchuk and doc emmerich and it was new york versus new jersey and it was john tortorella on one bench and it was peter DeBoer on the other bench and it was mayhem right from the start and Those guys have been involved in a lot of mayhem, and I'm talking about John and Peter. There was no love loss there, and that was the year that the Devils went to the Stanley Cup final and lost to New Jersey or, – or lost to L.A., excuse me, but the Rangers lost in the Eastern Conference final to the Devils. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Henrik Lundqvist was a goalie of record for, obviously, New York, and Marty Brodeur was a goalie of record for New Jersey, and Brodeur in that series was the better goalie. So all that being said um, – Peter is the home coach. He's not the road coach. Yep. Travis Green submits his roster, and then a gentleman from the NHL brings it around, an off-ice official, and hands it to, to Peter Laviolette, and Peter Laviolette's assistants will look at it more times than not. That's how the protocol works, the clearinghouse. And then he'll sign it, and he'll circle his starters, or one of his assistants will circle the starters. I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way they didn't know that something wasn't going to go on. Right. I mean, they watch the tapes. Yeah. They know about the Ziegenthaler collision with Rempe. They know about the Bastion collision with Rempe, which Rempe initiating. They know that. And if they see Curtis McDermott, six foot five, 235 pounds, playing left wing to Mm -hmm. start a game at Madison Square Garden, what did they think was going to happen? Exactly. What did they think was going to happen? Exactly. So, you know, my question is, why do you have Truber out there? Why do you have Anderson? Why do you have Why do you have guys that you're very valuable to your lineup, knowing what's coming out there? That's on you to not have them out there, Pierre. So that this is what I'm talking about, though, the great part about hockey, Jimmy. The passion of the fan base. So people in New Jersey are going to say, our guy was perfect. He did nothing wrong. And people in New York are going to say, our guy was elite. He was perfect. He did nothing wrong. And so halfway down the middle is actually the truth. Right. (laughs) Okay. Halfway down. And what you just said is really apropos. So I'm watching that and I know I got in touch with you right away. Yeah. And I'm watching that and I'm going, okay. So Jacob True was just coming back from injury. He gets in a fight and something happens. His shoulder pops, he breaks his hand, break whatever. And he's a critically important part of that team. All of a sudden he's not going to be in the play. The Rangers are in the playoffs. They've already clinched. Exactly. Okay. And then Keandre Miller on the other side. Okay. So Keandre Miller breaks his hand, breaks a cheekbone, something happens to him. 
and you're going to be happy with that. So I know that Ranger fans are going to be blaming Travis Green for saying, you started the shenanigans. And Travis Green's going to be saying, and the Devils fans are going to be saying, no, no, you, <laughs> you guys started it. So you got to be in the middle on this. and Which we are. <laughs> my, my, yeah, we, I don't care who wins and loses. Like, exactly. I enjoyed watching it. I did. But I'm just telling you, if one of those guys got hurt last night, I'm, I think the general manager of the New York Rangers would have been really upset. Yeah, I'm right with you, Pierre. And by the way, you referenced uh, that last time there was a big fight there like that, a line brawl. Back in 2012, Rangers-Devils, I did find that fight you were asking me for right before we came on, and it was Ryan Carter versus Stu Bickle. Is that the one you, you were looking two, for? Yeah, Stu Bickle and Ryan Carter went at it, and two really, really honorable men, both Minnesotans, hardworking, industrious guys. That's the only way they made it to the NHL. Stu Bickle's coaching. Uh, he started, I know, it in junior hockey in Minnesota. I think he's coaching now in the American Hockey League somewhere. Uh, and Ryan Carter does a very nice job on Minnesota Wild TV. He does a very, mm -hmm. very nice job uh, with Anthony LaPanta on that. So uh, good for Ryan and good for, for Stu. They're both involved in hockey still. But that I remember seeing that, and I was like, I didn't know that Carter could fight like that because Bickle's a big man. He's a oh, big yeah. man. He's a yeah. big, so, that, you know, I, I heard some people say, and this would – kind of bothered me a little bit about this. I heard people actually say, well, I've never seen that before at MSG. Are you serious? Like, yeah. Are you really serious? I, I guess. I mean, how old are these people that are saying this? They got to no, be really these are veteran okay, people. Okay, all right. Then they're, yeah, then come right. on. Come Just do on. Right. Research. Right. Jog your memory a bit. You know, and then, you know, I mentioned to you too, before we were coming on, don't, don't forget the, and you were at that game too, you worked at the Tom Wilson uh, Capitals Rangers, which, as you pointed out, essentially oh, led Jeff Gordon and John Davidson their job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a big one too. That was mm -hmm. a that was a good one there too. Um, but yeah, look, I, I I came away from that uh, saying one thing: man, I wish the Devils didn't blow it this season and they were going to the playoffs because I would love to see another seven game series between those two teams because there is some real hatred going on between those two clubs. And, and it's great. It's great to see that rivalry back. Well, you think about it. So that when here, I try to explain this to my friends and family members that live in Canada. Uh -huh. If you take the state of Connecticut, the state of New York around Manhattan and the state of New Jersey, there's close to 30 million people that live in those three places. Yep. The whole country of Canada has got 35 million. Yeah. So people are territorial in that mm -hmm. small an area. And so you got Islander fans, you got Ranger fans, and you got Devil fans. And man, oh, man, are they – all three fan bases are amazingly passionate. They are. Jay, they, are. They, they are. And I know you're a Bruins guy, and good for you because you're from Boston. Bruins fans are amazingly passionate. I'm from Montreal. Montreal fans are – mm -hmm. so this is my point. But in New York, you got three of them. And then you can add Philadelphia, which is a whole other entity – not yep. that far down the road, and you got mayhem. Yeah. And so now, which we haven't had in a while, and I forget what person I used to work with, but it was a great line. He called them mayhem makers. <laughs> and so when you look at it, the Islanders have some mayhem makers. The Rangers definitely have a, one mayhem maker for sure in Matt Rempe. The Devils have one in Curtis McDermott, and I know Brendan Smith's not afraid to get after it as well. Exactly. And so you see what John – this is a long-winded way of saying, now do you understand why John Tortorella is trying to make his team tougher and meaner and focus? Yep. Because he's That's dealing true. with these three guys who live in his backyard. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, and again, like I, I go back to what Tortorella said, you know, the other day we discussed it ad nauseum, but still – you know, I, I went back and watched that again this morning and uh, can't get enough of that, what he said there, because I think it's a great example right now for coaches coming up the ranks. Really, I really do. I think it's something that they should watch, something they should try and learn from uh, on how to deal with players. And Tortorella has obviously dealt with different generations. But, you know, you, you talk about this, whether people want to accept it or not, whether they agree with it or not, that's a whole other topic, Pierre. Mm -hmm. But this is still part of the game. Hockey is a violent sport. It always has been. It is, and it likely always will be. And you you can't just ignore that because if you do, your guys are going to get injured. 
So I'm with you. Like you need to prepare them for that. I'm not saying train them all to be fighters and, and just go out there and, you know, have slap shot every game, but you need to be prepared for that. And this was another example why, and by the way, Pierre, I want to give Keandre Miller credit to, mm-hmm. he could have went to town on, on John Marino. Marino. Absolutely. Yeah. And he did it and yeah. he knew, and, and, I, I know that seems like the common sense thing for for people out there to say, well, of course he's not. No, you're in the heat of the moment. Sometimes your emotions can get the best of you and you can do things that you're probably going to end up regretting and you can really seriously injure somebody. It's just like we said, it's a fast, violent, physical sport. And sometimes that can get the best of you. So for him to to comprehend that in that moment, I thought was pretty decent. And so kudos to him. Well said, Jimmy. I, I agree. The one thing we have to wrap our head around, all sport, especially played at the highest level, involves some form of intimidation. Yep. It does, whether people want to hear it or not, it does. You know, when a pitcher throws a brushback pitch at 100 miles an hour, he's not trying to hit the guy. He's trying to intimidate the guy. Yeah. There, there's a big difference. So they yeah. can come, So he can come with a big deuce not too far down the road and back the guy right off the plate because you think the play the plus all coming in his head. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just – you don't think intimidation happens in basketball? When guys do, you know, tomahawk dunks or whack the ball right back in someone's face? It's all part of intimidation. In hockey, we we have unbelievable forms of intimidation. Guys carry sticks. The boards are in play. You can shoot a puck anywhere you want as hard as you want. You can yeah. hit a guy from behind, even though it's not good. You still can. You're going to get a penalty, but you can. Yep. I mean, there's a lot of things. You could dump pucks in one guy's corner because you know he's an important part of the team, and you can whack him but good. Yep. Well, ask Raymond Bork in 91 and 92 when he played against Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. So intimidation is a real part of hockey, and it's yep. not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm with you on that. Pierre, looking at that Rangers team. Now, you, you said they are – and by the way, it's a hell of a game afterwards too. Let, let's yeah, not – The Rangers are for real. I, you know, I don't care what anybody, all these people that hate the Rangers. The Rangers are for real. They're, now, they have to prove it in the playoffs, but this season they've been for real. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about it a lot on this show. Part of why I think they're for real is their face-off play. Yep. And Michael Pekka, and I give Peter Lavi like full credit for this, he went out and hired Michael Pecco away from the Buffalo Sabres, mm-hmm. who was coaching in their farm system with Rochester. Yeah. Heck of a hire. It's a really good hire. And I haven't seen it documented anywhere, but I'm just telling you, it's one of those where that's inside baseball kind of stuff. Yep. You know what I mean? That's a critically important hire for your how team. Much, how much does that Buffalo organization miss him right now? I mean, they could have they could have used him. So yeah, but I, anyway, so Michael Michael was a really good hire, and Michael makes a difference in playoff hockey because faceoffs really matter in the playoffs. Yeah. They're magnified in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I had, well, I'll save it for another time. I have a good Michael Peckett story, but we'll save it for another save time. For another time. Might, be, it may, might be a better off the air type thing, and then maybe we'll tell it another time if I get the approval. Um, anyhow, Pierre, looking around the league, what else took, uh, what else caught your eye? with some of the games uh, last night. Dallas, Starsky, and Hutches. The Dallas Stars are so good. Their four-check game is awesome. I see a line of Radic Foxa, Craig Smith, and Sam Steele just inflicting mayhem on the Edmonton Oilers. Peter DeBoer used to be a big proponent of the 1-3-1, really hard system to play against. And they still deploy it a little bit. But what I'm seeing is a way more aggressive four-check game from Dallas. And especially going after that defense of Edmonton that's really mobile and likes to jump into the rush and create offense. Darnell Nurse was dash three last night for yeah. Edmonton. So that really stood out to me. Um, you know, I think when I look at Dallas, we all say how good they are, but they're vastly underrated just because they don't get a lot of national exposure. They're a really, mm-hmm. really good team. They're going to cause problems. Um, I liked Trevor Moore's game last night, obviously a hat trick. But uh, really impressive performance by L.A. And I think Ronnie Francis and, and Seattle has some soul searching to do. Yeah. There was not enough jam in that game from Seattle. They know that to win, they stay alive. To lose, they're out. They play like they were not ready to win last yeah. night. That was To me, of all the things I saw last night, that was probably the most disappointing was how Seattle played uh, in L.A. Well, 
Pierre, what stood out to me the most, and you know, I'll, I'll start by saying this, for the last few weeks, almost a month, we've been talking about Western Conference teams not mm-hmm. wanting anything to do with the Nashville Predators as they stormed up the, the standings and, and, and slotted themselves into you know, those wild card slots there. Uh, I think now when you look in the East, I do not want anything to do with the Tampa Bay Lightning and Andre Vasilevsky. Mm-hmm. He is in a zone. And right at the perfect time, they are nine, one and one since the trade deadline, Pierre, they have the best power play percentage and the best penalty kill percentage. They are going on all cylinders right now. I mean, we, we know Kucherov, he's been doing it all season, but everyone else is chipping in right now. They're getting great play from their depth guys. I thought Nick Paul was great last night. How about that goal he scored last night? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so they're, they're really rolling right now and they're in a zone they're playing cohesive hockey out there and all of a sudden as someone just pointed out good job by cuckoo 69 in the in the chat room there they're four points behind the leafs here yeah no they are again watching all the games yeah look at that no it's a great point it's a really good point i still think detroit's gonna make it yep Um, i do i told you that yesterday i'm gonna stay with that i'm not gonna change uh the one thing that i found interesting about the toronto tampa game and Tampa's playing in Montreal tonight. We'll see how that goes. That was a pretty emotional game for them. They played really well after the first period yeah. of Tampa we were talking about. But think about it. They're winning with a defenseman named Lilleberg. How many people even know where he's from? He's from Norway. They're playing They're playing with a guy named Perbix. How many people know where he played college mm-hmm. hockey? Um, they're, they're winning with a defenseman by the name of Radish. Not a vegetable, but Radish is his name. And he's a really good player. Well played. So, I'm just telling you, they got – Guys on their team, this is all the amateur scouting that goes on there. Yeah. Al, Murray, Al Murray and his group there are phenomenal. Uh, right. Julian Breezebois deserves a lot of credit. Matthew Darsh, all, the whole management team with the scouts. But they got guys playing there, Jimmy, that most fans, unless you're a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, you're like, where did that guy come from? Yeah. You know, who's that guy? Yep. Like Matt, Matt Tompkins might play in goal tonight for them. He's almost 30 years of age. I played at Ohio State, and last couple of years ago, I think he was playing in Sweden, if I remember, because I think I saw him play. Yep. <laughs> they find guys. It's it's not about numbers there, Jimmy. No, nope, it's, it's about, about the and, and, you know, you, you bring up Al Murray there and Julian Brisebois, and it just shows you how in sync they are, Pierre. You look at the uh, – what have we heard nonstop? And, and we both said it, you know, like sooner or later these guys are going to hit a wall. You know, I mean, three Stanley Cup finals in three years, and – uh, it's just been it's been a hell of a run for them, right? And you know, I, I don't know if I'm reaching too far. I I do compare it to the Patriots and what they did for a while. I know they did it for a much longer time, but it, you know, the way that they are able to know exactly what they need ahead of time to to know, hey, probably in two years we're going to be feeling it. We're not going to be able to keep this guy under the cap. We're not going to be able to keep that guy. We need to start identifying certain needs where we're going to have to slot guys in. And they don't have to be superstars. They just have to be able to come in here and do the job and buy in and, and, and fit in with our team in the dressing room. And they do it. And like you said, that's all about scouting. That's all about the eye test. It's a, it's a lot of research, too. You know, when I say fit in with the dressing room, you got to talk to people who have played with them, talk to people who have coached these guys. You got to look around and you got to really find the guys that are the fit for what you're trying to do. And I think they know, yeah, they're still trying to turn over and and go into a new era of their team, so to speak. But at the same time, they're steady and and they're able to maintain uh, success and enough to to stay in the playoff hunt. And right now, they're a scary team here. They really are. You You know, one of the things we've missed, it all starts at the top. Oh yeah, They're the best owner in the they national hockey league. Yeah, Jeffrey Vinnick is an off the charts owner. He has. Does he have Boston connections, Pierre? Yes, his children went to Noble and Greenow. Okay, he that's really fun. It was run out of Boston. Yes, he's yep. he's a Boston guy. Okay, and I will tell you this: he is one of the greater gentlemen you'll ever meet. Yeah, and it doesn't matter sport, non-sport. Like just my dad knew him. Yeah, he's just an amazing man. He's an awesome person. And it starts – so you talk about all those things that Tampa Bay has recognized. They're able to recognize it because they don't manage or coach through panic. Mm-hmm. Their, their owner's calm. 
Their yep. owner understands, you know, the dynamic of interpersonal relationships. Mm -hmm. you know, the owner leaves the hockey stuff to the hockey people. He mm -hmm. lets the business people do the business. Everybody understands their milieu. Yeah. He's a, he's a brilliant owner. The league is very fortunate to have him in that marketplace. And uh, the fans in Tampa are unbelievably fortunate to have Jeffrey Benick there. For sure. So that, that right now, I think, just watch them. Now, I know they're going into Montreal. And, and people are going to say, you know, it's a tail end of a back-to-back. -back, but um, <laughs> they're a little healthier, though, than the last team that came into Montreal on a back-to-back. -back. Yeah. They're not missing they're the it, though, Jimmy. You know what? Tampa's smelling it. You know, I think it was Cuckoo 66 or was in it? Whatever the per – yeah, Cuckoo. Yeah. Okay. So they're, they see the same thing that we see. They're four points back at Toronto. Mm -hmm. They win the night there, too. <laughs> they, yeah. They, they see that. You're like, and why not keep going? We don't. We're not. We're not afraid of playing Florida. No, nope. we wouldn't mind playing Florida. They would love that. They would you know, love because I think there'd be a little pay. They'd have the you know the payback thing going. Yeah, we're not. We're not afraid to play them. I think that would be great too. I mean, I, I that is, it's 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 developed into a great rivalry, but it just needs maybe another playoff series to really take it to the next level. Yeah, so that'd be great. It could. I mean, I would say this: if if Florida's healthy and Tampa's healthy, advantage would probably be Florida. I'd, I'd have Florida in six or seven. Advantage, but it'd, I would, be, it'd, be, it'd be really tight. It'd be Because yeah. all it is is one injury for either team, and then it could go one way or the other pretty fast. Yep, yep. So, Pierre, before I forget, uh, we had some news break this afternoon about a college player we've all been talking about, the uh, highly coveted graph. Uh, ends up signing with a team that we were discussing yesterday, both on this podcast and a podcast earlier in the day on the San Jose Hockey Now podcast. He signs with the San Jose Sharks, and Pierre, you called it. I mean, when you and I were kind of picking each other's brains on where he might end up, everybody kept saying that the East, the East, the East, and all that. But you said, no, you got to look at the team's lineups and where is he going to fit in nicely? Where is he going to get a chance to to get in there and and, and show his stuff and um, he doesn't have a lot of established veterans ahead of him. That's a, I think it's a great landing spot for him well, here. It's a, good, it's a good fit. And so Scotty Fitzgerald, who you know, very well, Tommy's brother, awesome guy. Uh, you know, he's still domiciled in Boston, even though he works for San Jose and he spends a lot of time doing a lot of heavy lifting and college drinks. Yep. And I'm going to say his fingerprints are on this a lot. Yeah. There's a sense of familiarity too, because he's a Boston kid and Mike Greer would have watched him as he was growing up playing minor hockey in Boston. Yeah, with the junior Bruins. With that. And, you know, they would have a lot of heavy intel, I would say, um, from the people at Boston University, where they're obviously really plugged in with David Quinn and, and Mike. Um, so they would have significant intel. Yeah. There were, there were, I can say this with comfort, 100% certainty. Every general manager in the league watched Colin Graff and Jacob Quillen played yep. this year. Yep. And probably and moved on. Now, some went back more than others. Yeah. But I'd say every single GM in the league went and watched them play. Yep. The one thing I told you forever, Colin's a really good scorer. He's going to have to find more edge in his game. Mm -hmm. and It's going to really help him if he plays with a top-end center to manufacture yep. chances. Where he's going to help them probably the most in the short term gunner on the power play because he can really rip it like he's accurate with a shot and he can rip it i want to ask you this too pierre one of the things that we we had a consistent theme talking about them yesterday whether it was on that other podcast or our own was that team defense needs to be priority there whether mm -hmm. that's forwards playing a two-way game or the blue line really improving which i think really needs to improve but you know is is he able to play that game and you have to develop that as well. That's not really his thing. It never really had to be. But what I would say about any player that plays for our friend, Rand Pecknold, you and I, Rand was great on our show, by the way. I thought yeah, he, he was a fantastic yep. job. He was really, really good. Um, and I would say that any player that plays there understands how to play on both sides of the puck. Okay. They understand mm -hmm. how to play offense and they know how to play defense. You know, it reminds me a lot of Jeff Jackson at Notre Dame. If yeah. you play for Jeff, you learn the finite parts of defending. You may not learn as much about offense. I think you learn a little more about offense at Quinnipiac. But when you're at Notre Dame, you learn the finite 
uh, skills of defending. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of Notre Dame players make it, even though they don't get a lot of points in the NHL, because they know how to defend. Yeah. Pierre, you know, okay, so he's gone right now. Any yeah. other big names still, or maybe, I shouldn't say big names. How about some names maybe people don't know about that maybe you have an eye out for that you've seen play that are still well, out there? You know, it's going to be interesting. Spot. <laughs> it's going to be interesting because there, there's so much high-end talent. So t I'll just call for a lot of these players, Jimmy. Yep. They're not going to be able to play NHL playoff games, and they're probably going to miss the regular season because any, the final four, the Frozen Four, is not this weekend. It's another week down the road, and the season is going to be over by then. Yeah. So you'd have to be signed by a playoff team to get an opportunity. I'd say most of these players this year will probably start in the American League. Okay. And, but the guy that I would really be watching that's going there that maybe is a little under the radar for people outside of the Michigan sphere would be TJ Hughes. He, he's a really talented kid, really, really talented. I mean, how do you miss Macklin Celebrini? You know, how, how are you going to miss watching Gabe Pearl? How are you going to miss watching Cutter Goche? How are you going to miss watching Ryan Leonard? How are you going to miss watching Will Smith? Yeah. Jacob Fowler. I mean – you know, the list goes on and on with all their murders. Or like, I'm telling Vlander, who plays defense for BU, he's a Vancouver draft. How are you going to miss watching him? Like, those guys are easy. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They're all yeah. superstar players. Yeah. But what's different about this year, most of these players aren't going to have a chance to play regular season games if they sign. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're, it's like Lane Hudson. So – if let's, I don't, I don't wish anybody to lose. I think the Frozen Four is super elite this year. It's awesome, you know, with Denver and BU, BC, and Michigan. That, that's those oh, are the blue blood, blood. those are blue blood teams. You know, yeah. who's missing? Minnesota, Wisconsin. You know, like mm -hmm. come on, Minnesota, Duluth. You know, Michigan State. I mean, there's not a lot missing. There's yeah. not a lot missing. That's all I'm saying. Those are blue blood teams. Um, they're all they all stars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah stars. It's a lot. Well, like we said, really, the only team that's not completely star laden, so to speak, is Michigan. Is yeah, you know, more some of the parts. And they still like the they still got high end players. players. Yeah, Gavin, they still, Gavin Brindley's a really good player. He's going to play yeah. for Columbus. Like it's not like they're not good players, right? But are they Adam Fantilli? No. Are they Obi Baker candidates? No. Are they Are they Macklin Celebrini? Yeah. No, they're not. They're not. They're not. Yeah. Those guys. Are they Jack Eichel? Are they Paul Korea? No, they're not. They're really good players. Yes, they got yep. Michigan's got a lot of really good players, and they're and they're well coached. They're very well coached. And by the way, too, in case anyone missed it, there, Hobie Baker finalists were announced yesterday: Jackson Blake, Cutter Gauthier, and Macklin Celebrini. I mean, what? Shocking! <laughs> we had that on the show like a month ago. Celebrini, man, it's like this kid, man. He's gonna be something. He already is, but yeah, it's, it's one of the big treats though. When you're around Boston, you get to go watch these guys practice, you know, oh, it's crazy. And how many options I've are watched Boston, you practice. I've watched BC practice, watch Northeastern practice. I watched Teddy Donato's Harvard team practice. You know, he's got, I think he's got 14 NHL draft picks on his team at Harvard. Yeah. And more coming next year, <laughs> more coming like Sean Keyhane's coming next year. who plays in West Cologne in the BC junior league. I mean, I, I don't want to bore our people, but the, you know, you oh, just—we no, love this. This is this is what we're going and right here, man. Uh, but you know, you go. I like to go. You know, I like to go watch practice because yes. it's really important. And I remember at the beginning of the year, LIU was about to play at BC, and I watched BC practice before LIU's practice. And I was watching Gochi just shoot the puck, and I'm, this guy's going to get forty goals in the NHL. I'm telling you, he is. Yeah, he yeah. might get more. But that's what this was before the trade too. Before the yep. trade happened, I'm like, this guy's gonna get four. I'm watching him shoot the puck, and I'm going, okay. I was fortunate to have Mark Recchi, I had Kevin Stevens, you know, big goal scorers, <laughs> Joey Mullen, Mario, yep. lot, Jeff Sanderson had 42 and 44 goals when I was working with him. Not just me, but our team. Mm -hmm. um, so I've seen some pretty good goal scorers. You know, in practice, this guy shoots the puck. Like he's an animal when he shoots the puck. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, but I, I love that you don't you go to those practices, Pierre, because obviously that's when you see the difference between the different levels of players. Because you can have all the skill and you want, but if you don't have good habits and you're not 
you're not practicing. It's like yesterday when, when I was talking to you about um, the keys in, you know, playoff hockey and you said how important practice days are and, and how big it is to get those days and to really go hard and practice and establish those standards then. So then you can apply them in a game and, you know, you see that because you're there all the time and you're noticing this about these kids at such a young level that they've already got that in them. And that's why they're going to excel. Character and coachability are two huge things. Oh yeah. I think a lot of the uh, interviews that teams do with players, a lot of times that gets missed. Mm -hmm. It gets overlooked. So I'll give you an example. Everybody's talking about Cole Eiserman, right? He's become a like a polarizing player, let's say. I'm not polarized by him at all. Like I think he's Cole, you're really good, man. Yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing. So I talked to a director of player personnel uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I think I might have said this yesterday. If I yeah, you did, did. I, you did, but you say it again. No, no, but I don't want to bore the people. No, no, it's good. It's good I, news. Because you talk to so many people, you just forget it. I'm letting you know he's a big name right now on, on social media as people okay. are starting to talk about the draft and a lot of teams are out of it that are looking ahead to that. A lot of fans, he's a buzz name. That, so, yeah, so people do want to hear about this. So you know, just so everybody understands, Jimmy my, is my social media director. I don't do social <laughs> media. Jimmy's my social media director. And you know it. Like he has to call me and tell me stuff. What's that? I don't know if that's a good thing, but <laughs> yeah, it's a very good thing. Um, but the, this guy said they were blown away by his interview. They were absolutely blown away by how professional he was. And he's not going to apologize for the way he plays. And he's not going to apologize for the way he scores. And he's not going to apologize for his celebrations. And he basically said, I think scoring should have a celebration. I think it's important. Yeah. What's wrong with that? So I, I said to this person, I said, you know, and as a kid growing up, there was a player, uh, player in the league that I eventually coached against. Mm -hmm. He was a player, Mike Foligno. Oh, and Mike, Mike was tough, really tough. Yeah. He's still he has to sell his, eh? his boys are still tough too, oh. but Mike, Mike's tough. And I don't know if people remember, Mike used to run up and down in place after he scored yeah. he had these wild jigs on the ice. And nobody was going to go to Mike Felino and say, hey, you're an idiot for celebrating that way. Nobody was going to do that, were they? Or when Timo Solani used to throw his glove in the air and go. Exactly. Who was going to do that to Timo, were they? No. So why are they picking on this kid? I know. Pierre, look, I, so you know the term growing up, we always heard, it, and it's still out there, is act like you've been there before, right? Yeah, yeah. Me, but to me, that that always, like, when my dad would talk about it and we're watching something, he would say it when it was like the player that's scoring three goals a year and he's acting like he's won the Stanley Cup. You know, like, he's like, yeah, come on. Yeah. You know? But if you've got it and you can back it up, if you can walk the walk, then so be it. Enjoy it. And, and I think hockey does need that more, especially, you know, as we're trying to bring in a younger generation, we're, we need more of that. And, and, try, and if, if we're trying to get into the mainstream more of the pro sports in North America, it needs that. I have no problem with it. As long as you don't, you're not arrogant about it and you can back it up. So be it. No, I'm, we're not, you and I are on the same page, but yeah. I, I don't like it when scouts look at a kid that has this kind of talent and all of a sudden they're using other things to hurt them in terms of yeah. how they evaluate. I, I don't think I, well, I would never be part of that. I would have yeah. a problem with that scout or scouting people that would do that. Yeah. You know, I can tell you the best scouting meetings look a little bit like what happened in the Rangers devils game last night. Okay. <laughs> Those are the best scouting meetings. <laughs> hey, it's like yeah. it's like it's, it's like Torch said in his presser yesterday. He said, "We're going to disagree. My coaches, my players, me, my GM, my director, of player personnel, my own. We're all we're not going to agree all the time. If we do, we're not going to be good. We need to disagree. It's healthy. We need, as long as we do it in a respectful manner and, yeah. and and we're we're contributing and backing up our stance, then so be it. That's what we need. We can't always agree. You know, That's it's." Right. Come right to, as long as Pierre, like we said it the other day, I think, you know, you're straight with me, but you do it in a respectful manner and you do it when it's needed. And, and I don't want to work with somebody who's going to keep things bottled up inside and, and not, and, and be phony with me. And then maybe behind my back, 
be telling people the horrible things about me. I write, you, you, you want to call me an a-hole? Say it right to my face and we'll move on. We'll sort it out. And that's the end of it. You're and that's too dramatic now. Stop it. You I am. But I love, I love people that are straight to the point. So that's, that's all. That's how our relationship started a long time ago. And it's going to continue. And yep. that's why this sick podcast eye test works. It is. So the Before, only thing I'm going to ask you, you have to wash that hat. It's getting a little dirty. <laughs> I got a new one coming. I, I still okay, good. That's good. <laughs> the new hat go. I still got to get you. This is the lucky one, but I got to, I got to get you a, a good one. I have a good place to go. Oh yeah. Again. Cause I need it. <sighs> yeah. All right. Uh, before we get to questions, I want to do a little, uh, this day in hockey history, Pierre. Mm -hmm. Um, and since Bobby Borgen. Oh yeah. Bobby Borgen sends these to us and God bless him for doing that. Thank you so much for that. Um, and since we're talking, Jersey, New York Rangers rivalry there. Uh, let's go to April 1st. Okay. Oh, no, it's not April 1st. Wait a minute. My apologies. Jeez, where's April this month 4th, going? By? We're at April 4th already. People. 4th, April 4th. I know. Like, where's it's playoffs two weeks from Saturday, by the way. All right. Let's find one on the Rangers and the Devils, if we can here. I don't see any, unfortunately. So I'm just going to pick one. Random one right here. I'll do one that you're connected to. Okay. It was a little before you wound up there, but uh, April 4th, 1980, mm -hmm. the Hartford Whalers became the first NHL team to win 21 home games in their inaugural season with Mike Rogers scoring two goals and two assists to become the first 100-point scorer in Whalers history in a 9-2 win over the visiting Quebec Nordiques. Pierre, do you remember Mike Rogers? I do. Diminutive little scorer. Could he ever score? He could sift. Yeah. He could I, sift. I don't remember the name, but. No, he was good. He played a little bit with the Rangers, too. Okay. He, he was a really, really good scorer. I do remember, Mike. Awesome. Um, you know, I, I think you'd have to look it up, Jimmy. I think there would have been a, a sighting with Bobby Hall and Gordy Howe around Hartford and Davey Keon, even, I think, at mm -hmm. the same time. It was unbelievable. Um, you know, some of the names that had been brought into Hartford. When there were some there. big names that came through there. I'm telling you, coming out of the WHA, like Pi McKenzie, the late Pi McKenzie was there. Yeah. There were a lot of big names. Larry, 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 Larry was there. I mean, yep. Ricky Lee was there. There are a lot of big name guys that came through there. And Tell Pierre, me. if you're not mistaken, the old New England Whalers, did they not play where your son's going to be playing next year? Did they play uh, yeah, Arena for a little? No, I think they played in Springy. I think they, oh, okay. I think they played right. in Springfield when the roof collapsed in Hartford. I think they played in Springy where you and I were. Yep. They were in Springy. Mass, it was a civic center then. It's a mass mutual now. Yeah, right. Good stuff. All right. Before we get to questions, let's uh, remind everybody of our wonderful sponsors. Let's bring up Factor right there. Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day easy. Head to factormeals.com. Slash ITES50. Use the code ITES50 to get 50% off. Again, that's factormeals.com slash ITES50. Use the code ITES50 to get 50% off. And I we, we met we referenced the weather outside for anyone who unfortunately had to trek home from work or is in, in the process of doing this as you listen to us live right now. Hey, you're not feeling like cooking when you get home right now after mm -hmm. that. You just want to kick back, throw a meal in the microwave, feel like you're eating healthy. And then get ready for the hockey games, and there's plenty of them tonight. Uh, so definitely go to factormeals.com slash ITES50. Use that code ITES50 to get 50% off. And how about our friends at Manscaped? This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Go to manscaped.com and use the code ITES for 20% off and free shipping. Again, that's manscaped.com, the code ITES. For 20% off and free shipping. And unlike me, make sure it's secured in your bag so it doesn't fall out in a hotel lobby. All right. Here we go. <laughs> let's uh let's get to question. What do we got, everybody? Oh, way to go, Jimmy. Hey, free, free advertisement for them. So yeah. all right, Jason Logan. Hey Jay. And by the way, uh, so Jay said that uh his kid, baby Sid there, because he named his kid after Sidney Crosby. Uh, he says that he dances to our, our theme song there every day when he turns it on. So he's oh, that's cool. Good. Going out to it. So a little hello to baby Sid there. Uh, tonight is a big game for the pens. If they win, they will be one point out of the playoffs. <sighs> Did not think I'd be saying or reading that. About no. If they do make the playoffs and keep Alex in net, can they go deep? 
No, I don't think so. I don't think so, but just making the playoffs. Just making the playoffs would be amazing. So what that speaks to, greatness of Crosby. Yes. Does. Nadalkovich coming in and bailing the day out for them. Mm -hmm. And Mike, Sul Mike Sullivan's coaching. Yeah. How, th their power play's no good. Yep. It's gotten a little better, but it hasn't been good all year. And the way they've been able to overcome it, I think, is through coaching. Yep. Mike's done just a fantastic job. I mean, people are going to say, oh, what about the beginning of the year? That's not a great team. <laughs> they got, no. no. <laughs> they, have one guy, they have one guy that's just pulling the whole sled. And it's it's and they, don't forget they traded Gensel too, and that's when it was. I was there when they traded, and it was like, you what? know, what's interesting, Pierre. Though and I can't think of the other team right now. There's another team who traded a big player, but has done pretty well. Well, yeah. Calgary's not. They, they no, traded, not Calgary. They traded a few guys. Gonna uh, it'll come to me, but anyhow, I feel like a couple times in the last few seasons, we've seen teams kind of yeah, they have that initial kind of swoon and they go down a bit, but then they rebound and they, and they start to find it. And whether they make the playoffs or not, I, I like the way that even if they don't make the playoffs right now, Pierre, they are starting to form something for next season saying, Hey, there's something to salvage out of this either way. Mm -hmm. At least we know that we did put together a string of really good hockey. We played like a team, we faced some adversity. So that's something the penguins can carry through. All right. Next question. Anthony DeStavolo. Hey, guys. I know Cole Eisman's name has come up a few times. What do you guys think about Caden Lindstrom? Seems the exact profile the Canadians need in the top six in addition to Slav. Too early to tell. I've got to watch a lot more tape. Okay. And I don't. I haven't seen him play yet, so I can't comment. Uh, All right. Next question. John Smith. Hey, guys. I'm quite impressed with some of the recent results of teams going full rebuild. Pens aside, which are teams should consider bottoming out and resetting? Cheers. They've already started. San Jose started. Yep. Chicago started. Columbus is kind of funky because it doesn't have a general manager right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they've tried to bottom out. I think they were trying to be in the pool. Like I think they were trying to be competitive. Yeah. Were. I think they were. What's going to be interesting, Jimmy, if they miss, what happens in Pittsburgh? I'm going to give you teams where it's going to be interesting. If Pittsburgh misses, what's going to happen in the offseason? Not with personnel, like management. What's going to happen with players? And direction. Direction, yes. Yeah. If the Islanders miss, what's going to be the direction? Because you got a coach that's there and a general manager that's larger than the entire organization, mm -hmm. justifiably so, by the way. Yeah. And Lamorello, I mean, legendary person. His career is amazing. Um so what will be the direction of that team? And if Philadelphia misses, if Philadelphia misses, what's going to be the repercussion for some of the guys that maybe Torch doesn't think fit into what being a Philadelphia Flyer is? Yep. Yep. Those are, those are three. Now, I haven't really touched on Western teams. You know, what happens in Calgary? Seattle. What happens in Seattle? What mm -hmm. happens in Minnesota? You know, Arizona, we talked about for a long stretch, it looked like they were becoming relevant, and now they've kind of gone back. Yeah, well, they so just what happens there? They've got that whole cloud hanging over them. With the, rink, like, with the rink. No, it's true. It's fair. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. In, in the East, I think it, there's some really interesting storylines in the East. There really will be. There will be no shortage of things to talk about in the eye test. That's summer. why the eye test will be busy. That we're still be. By the way, we will still be going in the summer, just so everyone knows that. We don't, we don't stop. We won't be doing five days a week, but we'll no. But we'll, we'll be, be talking. Yeah, we'll be talking. You'll you'll see us here from time to time or on the beach. All right. Uh, <laughs> next question. Jeffrey B. Looks like Ekblad is out for the rest of the regular season. That's what we talked about the other day. Yeah. Are we uh, after wrestling Slavkovsky? Are we considering having this many players coming back right before the playoffs? May leave their team a bit timid. Um. Mm -hmm. Hockey players are tough people. They're creatures of habit. Yeah. They show up and play the way they want to play. Teams on losing te – players on losing teams, which Seattle has been this year, mm -hmm. they didn't bring it last night. That had nothing to do with injuries. That had to do with they're just – they didn't want to play. Yeah. They just didn't want to play. Yeah. So, 
we've seen a few of those, Jimmy. I mean, this last little while, we've seen a couple teams just Toronto a couple times just mail it in. Yeah. Not good enough. By the um, way, they, I want to say, too, they didn't mail it in last night. No. Like, the, I would say this. Tampa, Tampa was just so much better. better. The last 40 minutes of that game, Tampa was just better than them. It's not about yeah. them mailing yeah, it in. It's just it. Tampa was better. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, next question. Joe Segreto, did you see when Laval play-by-play -play announcer said on Tony Marinaro's show, definitely urge everyone to check that out here on the Sick Podcast Network, uh, that he thinks Caden has a higher ceiling than Monty. That's Caden Primo and Samuel Montembeau. Uh, would like to see if he's correct. So I'm going to tell you something that's not part of the question. Jacob Fowler has a higher ceiling than both of them. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about yep. that. Yep. That 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 point could, in other words, what we're saying is that point could be quite moot within right. two to three years. So, all right, next question. Mike says, Pierre, have you ever coached a game that had a line brawl? Is it planned ahead of time? <laughs> Can I play Sergeant Schultz on this? <laughs> I hear nothing. I hear nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say yes. Um, both in the minors and in the NHL, but to say five on five, no, but yes, I've been part of, yes. Okay. Not, not like last night though, not been part of anything like that. All right. Let's go to the next question. Got a lot of them today too, by the way. Thank you. Well, Cause you know what, I, what I'm finding out, especially when I've traveled a lot, um, is how many people actually are tuning in. Yeah. We're, we're really grateful. And and part of the experience is just this, the question. Yes. Yep. This is great. All right. Vincent Uriel says, hello, gentlemen. Some people are talking 36 NHL teams. If you think the NHL expands to four more markets, what cities and in what order do they join? Fingers mm -hmm. crossed to see Pierre and Hartford again. <laughs> yeah. I don't, unfortunately, I don't think Hartford has the infrastructure to do it. And that breaks my heart because I'm I really enjoyed living there. Yeah, yeah, and I, I I'll tell you what, when Brian Burke when Brian Burke hired me there, Jimmy, I I loved it. I was so into what Brian was selling and what he was doing and, and his vision for the franchise. Mm -hmm. And then after nine months, he went to go work for a brand new commissioner in the league, Gary Bettman, as his deputy. So I understood that and things kind of changed a little bit. But I I loved the neighborhood. I loved everything about it. I don't think they're going to get a team. So I would say Houston, Texas. I'd say Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I would think that there's a chance that Salt Lake City is going to get one. That's three. And I'd say my fourth one might be Portland, Oregon. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Or consider this. Another team in Toronto. It's been close. North of the 401. Yep. Yep. Those would be – I think there's no shortage of markets. And with franchise – this is really important for the fans to digest – with franchises going, I would say an expansion team would go for between nine hundred and a million, a billion dollars. That's money that the players never get. That's not hockey-related revenue. So, in any collective bargaining agreement, all that money is going to the relevant owners in the league at the time and the, and the league. The players are getting a, a nickel, a nickel of that. They're not getting any. So yeah. that's just why I think there'll be four new teams. One question on it. I'm glad you brought that up and and, and made everyone alert of that, Pierre. One thing I've heard is that that could be a real sticking point when the CBA is up again. I'm sure it will be. Players are not too happy about that, especially if we're going to have four more teams coming in. They want a piece of the pie. So that's going to be really interesting to follow there. So so the, I think the counterbalance to that will come from the league will be we're providing more jobs for yep. your constituency. Yep. So – I get it. I get, by the way, I understand both sides of this. I'm not picking one over the yeah, other. I'm picking a side. But I'm just saying, it as it stands now, that's not considered hockey-related revenue. Yep. I'm with you. I, I, I agree with you on the four cities there. I do really pray that Quebec gets one. I just, not at, this, at this point in time, I don't see it. Yeah, it's no. it's horrible to say. It's just the, the reality of it right now, unfortunately. Yeah, it just breaks my heart. Um, that's another one. It more than anyone. They deserve yeah. it more than any of the potential cities. I know, but 
I, I just don't see it realistically. Yep. Happening. The Canadian dollar is a big problem, and the taxation issues in the province of Quebec are a re very real problem. Very yeah. real problem. By the way, did you see, and, and just while on expansion and teams moving, did you see the, uh, the Oakland A's are going to play out of Sacramento for the next three seasons in like a minor league? Till their, till their stadium like, in Vegas is ready? Yeah. Wait I didn't for know that. they were going to Sacramento, um, yep. but that's pretty neat. That's cool. Well, yeah, you got to check out the press conference. I'm gonna, it, I'm it, look, I'll go look at it more. It did not go well. All right. Uh, next question. <laughs> Lots of Leafs fans I keep talk I talk to keep saying how Tampa Bay and this is from Samuel Matthew by the way keep saying how Tampa Bay should take over third in the Atlantic so they can drop to the first wild card but that leads to New York Rangers or the Bruins that doesn't sound ideal to me it's not never it's try to pick your opponent play as hard as you can and as wise as you can and set your team up to play in the playoffs because if you're gonna go deep you're gonna have to play everybody anyways yeah. You got it. You're gonna have to beat don't the best team. To table. Just go play. Yeah. Don't have any bad hockey karma. Don't tell your guys, "Oh, we're gonna lay back here." Yeah. This is the time of the year where you're teaching good habits, not bad habits. Exactly. I love that answer. All right. Next question. Mark DeBoer, any relation to Pete? Can you picture a scenario where the Habs could dangle Hudson for a quality forward? I, I, I don't. But if it's some out of this world forward. I don't know. That, something might change their mind, but at this point, I don't think so. I would be really surprised. Yeah. Based on, you know, the fact how tied in Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon are to the BU program. Mm -hmm. You know, Kent Hughes has a son playing there. Jeff Gordon has a son playing there. Jeff told us on our podcast that they actually get great intel from both kids. And they, one of obviously one of the priority players there is Lane Hudson. If the Canes want to have a really good elite power play, you need one. And it's not a knock on Mike Matheson. You, nope. We've raved about him all year. But you need to have an elite power play quarterback. Lane Hudson's that guy. Yep. that guy. Every yeah. team, I can tell you right now, even if you have a good power play in the league, so use Tampa as an example. Tampa's power play is world class, right, Jimmy? Like, it's crazy good. Yeah. How good would it be if they had Lane Hudson? Oh, wow. Wow. Because, I see, if you've got a power play that's that good – it affects how your opponents play against you because they can't go trying to kill your guys. Because if yeah. you take bad penalties, what's going to happen? It just dropped into my head too about that pair with Tampa and their defense too. Do we know, is there a chance Sergachev comes back at all in the playoffs? No, or is it just, I don't think so, Jimmy. Okay. That would be I, I, I hope I'm wrong on that, but I don't yeah. think so. Okay. Well, yeah. So that would be nice to have a guy like Hudson without him in there. All right. Next, uh, next question. Pierre, with only two ECHL teams in Canada and the immediate closure of the Growlers, God, it's so horrible to hear about. Yeah. Growlers and Trois Riviere Lions allowed to continue with possible new owner. What are your thoughts? I, I'm a big fan of that league. I worked in that league in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, it was an amazing market. Uh, we were getting gigantic crowds. We had an amazing rivalry with Biloxi, Mississippi. Bruce Boudreaux was coaching there. Lafayette, yeah. Louisiana. Doug Shedden was coaching there. And there was a guy in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, by the name of Bruce Cassidy, who was coaching there. It, <laughs> it was unbelievable how competitive the games were. I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the only thing that was tough were the bus rides. <laughs> the bus rides were pretty long. I felt bad for the players. Um I hope that the teams can survive. It goes yeah. back to what I said about Quebec. The Canadian owners take in Canadian dollars. The Canadian dollars not doing well versus the U.S. Now, I know in the ECHL, players are playing Canada, get paid in Canadian dollars. Players are playing the States. But if there's only two teams, most of your expenses are in the U.S. because you're going across the border a lot, and it adds significant yeah. problems to your revenue stream. So. It's a problem. There, uh, I don't think there's any easy solution. I just no. don't. St. John's is such a great place. It's tough to see them lose a team again. That's well, three teams now, I think. Jimmy, I, I just wish I, – I like, I've been to American League games there. I've been to World Junior Training Camps there. I've been to the Air Canada Cup when it was played there. I've been to a lot of different events. I tried to recruit a kid out of there a long time ago named Teddy Russell. He was a really good player. Mm -hmm. Ended up going to the University of New Hampshire, and he had a really good career there. Played in the American League a little bit down in Hershey. Um, so I have really fond memories of everything Newfoundland. I think based on the way it is, I would see them join in 
the Quebec Maritime Hockey League. Okay. What the Quebec Major Junior League has become because a lot of their premier yeah. franchises yep. are, are in the Maritimes. You know, back in the day when I was really involved with, with Ottawa, way back in the 90s, most NHL teams that were in Canada had their farm teams in the Maritimes. Mm -hmm. You know, you had Toronto was in St. John's. Uh, you had somebody in St. John, Calgary. You had um, Winnipeg was in Moncton. Montreal was in Freddie Beach, Fredericton. Quebec used to be in Halifax. I mean, most of the teams were down there. Yeah. And it was really good. It was, and it was, and Edmonton, no, Edmonton actually, Edmo went to um, Cape Breton. They were in Cape Breton. I was just going to say, yeah. Cape so Breton. In Sydney, Nova Scotia. But no, there, it was awesome. It was awesome there. It was really yeah. good. Yeah. Well, let's hope it works out. We'll see what happens. All right, we got time for like one or two more. What do we got? Eighty-seven Eagles. What's up, my friend? How far up the draft do you think Ty? Can, am I pronouncing his word? His yeah, name? that's that's Jerome Ginla's son. Yep, Ty Ginla can go after the season and playoffs. He's having. Can he get to second overall? I don't, I don't think, think so. second overall. I don't think so. Top seven. Oh, he can go in. The, I think top six. Okay, but to say top. Two, I'd say no. I would be surprised. Did he? Did he? End up, did he play around here, Pierre, where we are in Dexter? Yeah, he, went, he was at. Uh, he played here, and I think I want to say he might have gone to the Dexter School, Dexter South. That's what I thought. Years. Yeah. You know, hey, by the way, I've seen his sister play. She plays at Brown. Oh, she's good, huh? He, she's elite. Yeah. He, she's an elite offensive player. Um, I saw her playing a playoff game um, this year uh, at, believe it or not, at Colgate. She was out. She was outstanding. She was really, really good. Good stuff. All right. Next question. I think this will we'll take. We'll take two more. No, Keith, right. if we have some, just yeah, whatever we got left, as long as it's yeah, not. Don't like, leave anybody high and dry. Go we're ahead. good. All right. What do we got, Samuel Mate? What do you guys think about the Stamco situation? I can't see him playing anywhere else. Seems as if the next few months don't go well. Management might look to move on. I don't think so. I, I've got this. I think they would have moved on. I, I, I got a feeling they just work it out. I, I think he wants to stay there. He's going to have to take a, a pay cut. I, I I don't see them parting ways. I don't know why. I think it's going to come down to how many years he wants to keep playing there. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be about dollar value. I think it's going to come down to term. Yep. And so we'll see. Um, I know one thing. When everybody else was saying he was going to Toronto as a lead pipe cinch, mm -hmm. I was going public and saying, no, it's not. He told me he's staying here. Yeah. yeah. So. so, yeah, if he can, he'll stay there. We'll see what happens. All right. We got five more, I'm told, by our producer, right, Sammy. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, go, we'll, fire. we'll go rapid fire. Let's go. Stefan, which NCAA free agent should the Habs sign? We need top nine talent. Um, I'm going to say TJ Hughes. All right. TJ Hughes. Next. Jared, are the Bruins looking to add any more college free agents? Feels like Nelson isn't enough for a team not having a first rounder for the last three years. I think they're trying. I don't know if they will, um, but they're trying. That's all they're I can trying. say. They're trying, but I don't think they'll have – it won't yeah. be easy, but they're trying. Be. All right, next question. Joe Marquet, hello, good sirs. I was amazed after seeing the ND locker room tour – it's North Dakota, I think he's referring to. Is there a CHL version of the Ralph? London. London. The Hunters yeah. have built something really special in London. They really yeah. have. I mean, that's yep. something else. And yeah. you know where else? My friend Brent Sutter in Red Deer uh -huh. has done a really good job with that building. It used to be called, I think, the Central Plex, I think. Okay. Um, but Brent's done a really, really good job with that. Um, but it's – I don't think – I've been in the Ralph a lot. <laughs> I don't think there's too many buildings, yeah. whether it's the NHL or junior hockey or college hockey that's anything like the Ralph. Next year, Pierre, we're doing a college arena tour for this show. I think right? we should. Like, I really do. Um, there are a few that really – the Ralph is one you want to yep. do. Uh, Alphon Arena in Maine is one you got to yep. do. Um Matthews Arena. In North I was East. just going to say that, Matthews, and it's right here. Yeah, Matthews we'll, Arena we'll in Northeastern is spectacular. Yeah. There's, there's a time. I mean, hey, Mud, the brand new Mud Arena out of Michigan State, spectacular. Mm -hmm. uh, building at Wisconsin when it's full is crazy. University of Michigan, the building is 
unbelievable since they did all the renos. Notre Dame, when you pull up to the rink in Notre Dame, the Compton Family Ice Center, it looks like a church. <laughs> and you go in and you're like, holy mackerel, this is unbelievable. No, I, there's so many good I mean, there's so many good ones. All right, that wasn't right. rapid fire. I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't think the people mind as long as you as long as you don't could have go anywhere, Pierre. I'm good. I'm no, I just like talking to you, Jimmy. I got my I got my pregame stuff for the Bruins out of the way. I'm good to go. Yeah, All right. Next really, question. I don't have to be there until seven, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I gotta be on the couch watching the games. Mike says, Pierre, how do you decide what game to oh there you go? But that was a beautiful segue. <laughs> Mike says, How do you decide what game to watch on a night like tonight? Do you have a setup with multiple televisions? Yeah, computers, TVs, and different things. So the answer is yes. Way. Um, you know, one of the things that was really cool when we had our home in Connecticut and I was working for NBC, I had lots of TVs and watched every game. Like yeah. every game. So I've got I've got two laptops and the TV. I got the Bruins so on the you know, the Bruins on the main one and then two other you games. You know what's really funny? I gotta share this about Jimmy. I usually text during the course of the games. And <laughs> It's almost like we're on the same wavelength when we're doing it. <laughs> and I get a text, did you see that? I'm like, no, it's the same thing that we both saw. Yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. And same with our crew, our, our great production crew as well. They're, they're watching all of them as well. Yeah. All right, next question. Evan McLaren. Hey, Evan. Penguins, Capitals, Crosby, Ovechkin, playoff implications. They should have gotten Pierre and Doc together for this game tonight. I was going to say, Pierre, you know, this is a – I'm going to feel old and I'm going to make you feel even older, but this is a throwback game. <laughs> oh, Doc is. You saw amazing. some battles with those teams, huh? We, we did a lot of those. You know, first it started out with uh, JD, John Davidson, and then JD went to be the general manager in St. Louis. And we, Eddie came on, Eddie Olchuk. And uh, I think we did 15 years of them. So it was, yeah. there was a that rivalry. Afternoon games, man, with the those, those rivalries never got old. There's, you know, the one thing about those, everybody talking about Crosby and Malkin, or Crosby and Ovechkin. I I saw more bad stuff Ovechkin on Malkin. Like every oh, game, he was trying to kill him. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Jason Logan uh, sent me something on Instagram, a, a GIF or whatever, a little video of that one. I don't know if you remember it. It was like one of their first games, Pierre. And Ovechkin, you just see out of the corner of the screen, Ovechkin's coming in like a heat-seeking missile and just missed Malkin. I, just I missed Jordan. And they kind of collided a bit, but. Well, everybody, it was always Ovechkin, Crosby. No, it was more Ovechkin, Malkin. Yeah. <laughs> was was Russian. Yep. There we go. All right. Next question. Arbor. Good stuff. Ask Pierre what he thinks of Ryan Paling. Only time I disagree with him. Dude has no heart. Well, hey, I didn't like the guy either, Arbor, but credit where it's due. He has been a great find for the Flyers. I'm a big I'm a big Ryan Paling fan. Uh, he's a big person that can skate. He can play as a depth player. He's very cap friendly. Um, his agent really understands Dean Grillo, exactly where the kid is in his career. Uh, you know, I think the Pittsburgh Penguins made a big mistake when they let him go for nothing this summer. Yeah, uh, you know that's what they needed. Um, so I, I think he's done a tremendous job in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, to say he has no heart is pretty rough. I would say he's got a lot of heart. There's, you know, it's interesting. I don't think anybody makes it in the NHL that doesn't have heart. It's a really hard business to make your living yeah. in. Really and by is. the way, too, I, I also wonder too, Pierre. Montreal's always wanted that power for it. I feel like he just kind of got typecasted, and when he wasn't exactly what. The Something happened. Wanted. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's a boss. Why is he a boss? Maybe you that's know. not what he is. He's a different type of player. He is what he is. As long Something, as he happened. Something happened there, I can tell you, because uh, I know it yeah. for sure. I don't know that. I don't Something know. happened between him and coaches and management people, and I think he was tired of getting beat up on. Yeah. So he became disposable. There we go. All right. All right. Is that it? I think we're done. No, never done. It looks, it looks like we are. I mean, questions, that's fine. That's good. But yeah. we got work to do tonight. So what are you going to watch tonight? What's your favorite game tonight? Well, you Let's know. Boston, Carolina. You're besides, gonna... Boston, besides Boston, Carolina, I'm very curious to see if the Lightning can uh, win a back-to-back -back in Montreal. Montreal has been a tough out for a lot of teams right now up here. I'm also obviously looking at the game we just discussed. I think it's the game of the night. Penguins, Capitals. Bring me that. No, over I, over. I think that's the game of the night. Uh, I'm going to watch Tampa Montreal a lot because I 
There's not much in the late games, though, eh, Pierre? Just one. No, there's really – well, if L.A. goes into San Jose, they just cement their position. You know, they're coming off a big win last night on home ice, but yeah. they just cement their position. Um, St. Louis has the, you know, big game in Nashville. I say that. I mean, that's a big game. Preds have lost two in a row right now, too, so maybe, you know, see how they bounce back. I still can't believe Yossi missed that wide open net against Boston. <laughs> I know so but yeah I think all eyes will be on the caps and the penguins it's good That's to see obviously that. a gigantic game but I, I will be yeah. watching Tampa Tell Montreal them. Tampa Montreal because Tampa if they can beat Montreal tonight in Montreal the Toronto Maple Leafs are looking in the rear view mirror nobody wants to admit oh. that at this time of the year but you know they're looking in the rear view mirror yeah. out of nowhere I don't know where. All right. Well, we want to thank all of you who asked those great questions and thanks for your support there in the comment section, listening, watching, you know, we appreciate you. And again, like Pierre said, stay safe in this weather and thanks to our production crew as always for the wonderful job they do. We will be back tomorrow. We'll mm -hmm. talk some college hockey because uh, actually a week from today, Pierre is when the frozen four yeah, starts. We'll do some college though, but it's a big NHL night too. Yeah. We'll, see we'll, tonight. Talk a lot of NHL. we'll recap the night tonight and look ahead to the weekend. Uh, we do have a college guest that will be uh, calling in live from St. Paul next week. Uh, but we mm -hmm. want to tell our, our programming change as well as we did before in the, in the regionals uh, a week from today, we will be at noon Eastern. So uh, just so we could get that guest on, it's Mike McMahon. He's of college hockey inside. He does a great job. He's, out, he's Oh my gosh, Jimmy. Yeah. He's that, all over the portal, man. He, he really covers Merrimack college warriors and he's done a magnificent job yeah. at that. But, He's doing he's connected his work. Yeah. Like read his stuff online. It's, it's amazing. It's really good. I don't, know, I don't know if the guy sleeps. <laughs> he must be a map guy. He must no, seriously. Yeah. Like he had stuff written about different players. I know I sent you one of them where he had that a player had scored six or seven points in six games against six NCAA tournament teams. Yep. Okay. Like uh, I think I know a lot about the game, but that that to me was wow, that's impressive. Like he he's very very good. Sites, he's going to be boots on the ground. We'll get him to call in from St. Paul. Looking forward to that. That's a week from the day at noon Eastern. But we will be back tomorrow for the final show of this week. So join us here on the Eye Test on the Sick Podcast Network. Enjoy the hockey tonight. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the eye test with Pierre McGuire and Jimmy Murphy on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.